Hi there, my name's Nathan Ledd. I'm a member of the Morgan's research team. Power prices have been quite topical in the press lately and I just wanted to take you through what my thoughts were and what is actually driving these power price increases and which companies on the ASX you can get uh, exposure to those power price movements. This chart is a simplified version of the electricity value chain. A recent government report estimated that generation and retailing costs contributed about 40 to 50% of the residential price. Green costs to do with environmental policies of the government accounted for about 5 to 10%, and network costs, being the poles and the wires, accounted for about 40 to 50%. Let me take you through what I think is happening with each of these different elements of the value chain. On the eastern uh, part of Australia, uh, electricity is traded through the national electricity market. Generators compete with each other for dispatch of electricity into the market, which ultimately determines the wholesale price. There is a regional reference price for each region in the market and that power is traded between those different regions. Now the big story in the generation or wholesale side of the market is there's been a bull market in terms of the power prices. I just wanted to show you on this chart here, this is the Victorian wholesale price, um, uh, forward contract price, and it's in dollars per megawatt hour. And you can see that it has more than doubled over the last year. There's been a number of factors that have caused this. Uh, that's including closure of thermal coal plants uh, and also gas-fired plants, uh, penetration of renewables into the energy mix, and an increasing cost for gas-fired power generation because of rising domestic gas prices. Weather events and constrained interconnectors between the regions have also contributed to the issue. I think the stock with probably the best exposure to this rising wholesale, wholesale price thematic is AGL Energy. It has a relatively fixed cost base and it is long generation in New South Wales and Victoria. What this means is that as the price, if the prices remain steady and at these elevated levels, uh, they should eventually pass through their revenue base in terms of their wholesale operations and also their retail customer base, which will ultimately benefit their profits. AGL has advised the market that this earnings benefit will likely phase in over a number of years. Another major, if I can call it, gen tailor in Australia is Origin Energy. It certainly has exposure to this thematic too, although I think less so from an investment perspective because it is somewhat diluted by its upstream gas activities and also its LNG um, interests out of Gladstone. I think it's also worth noting the uh, increasing cost to do with the environmental policies regarding the renewable energy target. This chart here shows the rising price for large-scale generation certificates underneath that renewable energy target. The rising price is being caused because there's an expectation of a shortfall in LGC supply to achieve that target by 2018. The stock with probably the best exposure to this thematic is Infogen Energy. Infogen owns a portfolio of wind farms and it has spot exposure to both the higher LGC prices and also the higher wholesale prices on some but not all of its assets. It's also worth highlighting that Gen X Power is building a renewable solar farm in north, far north Queensland and is also looking to develop a pump storage hydro project which should benefit from the increased volatility in the wholesale market. Moving on to the network uh, side of the electricity supply chain, this is where the monopoly assets within the industry reside. Since they are monopolies, they are regulated by the Australian Energy Regulator and they use a pricing approach like what I've included in this chart here. Regulatory resets occur at different times for different assets across different states. The regulator um, um, forms a view in terms of what the allowed revenues are for the networks across the following five years. Just wanted to highlight that the major driver of the allowed revenues um, over recent times has been the fall in bond rates that has contributed to a reduction in the WAC or return on capital allowance. With the bottoming of bond rates and interest rates moving upwards, we should expect that the network costs will move upwards over time. In addition to that, the network companies, a number of network companies, have mounted legal challenges to recent regulatory decisions, which could also see, if successful, see uh, uh, network costs increase further. 
Within this, uh, the network segment, I'd like to characterise it as being uh, a relatively low business risk um, uh, side of the, um, the electricity distribution, sorry, electricity supply chain compared to those in the generation and retailing side. These are natural monopolies, as I've said previously, and they provide essential services and, provide, and thus provide stable and predictable cash flows. Yield is generally a higher component of the overall investment return than those uh, stocks within the generation and retailing side. Also worth highlighting that M&A has been a fairly consistent theme over time for stocks within the network side of the, uh, of the electricity supply chain. Uh, for example, at the moment we have Hong Kong based CKI uh, proceeding with a takeover offer for Duet Group. Coming to, or trying to put it all together in terms of the overall retail price, um, look, retail is an incredibly competitive market in Australia. It ranks as one of the most competitive uh, markets in the world. So it's not easy to actually form a view on retail prices. Retail prices can be impacted by uh, a consumer's load profile, where they are located, um, what discounts are being offered, etc. However, if we think about the different elements that make up the retail price, like we've talked about before, generation costs, green costs, network um, costs, each of those are headed upwards. So I would expect that we should see retail prices heading north, and in some case, quite substantially. It begs the question then, which companies on the ASX could actually be negatively affected by higher power prices? Uh, in the first instance, you'd expect those that have a, a high degree of electricity costs within their cost base could be, um, could be hurt. Uh, an example of those uh, recently was Brickworks, who have come out and made an announcement to the market about how their cost base will be impacted by these higher electricity costs. I think we also need to think about companies that have relatively skinny profit margins and that don't have the pricing power to be able to pass through higher electricity costs to their customers. They could also be hurt. Also want to point out too, mums and dads are likely to feel the pinch in their electricity bill. Gosh, I certainly uh, felt it in my last electricity bill that went up substantially. This uh, final chart here just provides a summary of the different companies operating within the electricity uh, supply chain. Um, if you'd like to discuss any of the stocks uh, or the industry, please contact your Morgan's advisor. Thank you very much for your time today.